makes you want to shout. Amen. I hope and pray that all of us are here to have a celebration today of the homecoming <laughs> of our dear brother, Richard Daltrey. And it won't be very long if this world tarries very much longer. Jesus is going to come back and bring all the saints of God with him. Amen. And I'm going to be looking forward to seeing him with the reaper again. Thank you, Amen. And I may go to be with him, but I'll be back to see you too. Amen. <laughs> And I, uh, I'm not going to say a whole lot about Brother Reaper today because the Lord's been keeping a record for many, many years. Right. And he's got them complete, accurate. What I say or anybody else might say about Brother Reaper, you're not going to get it right. <clears throat> I can assure you that because we all have mental blocks sometimes about things. But God does it. God has kept a record. And nobody in this world can be able to match what Brother Reaper has done since he became a Christian. But there's one thing for sure and for certain today that he's not saying one thing that I've heard him say a lot of times in my life. And that is, keep your nose clean, Robert. <laughs> There ain't nobody in heaven that's got a bad nose. <laughs> and he can't tell nobody that today. So I know. And I, that's just one thing he ain't going to be able to say. He's going to be there. He, he, you know what he's going to say? Oh, sure. <laughs> but anyway, I'm, I'm blessed beyond anything God has ever placed upon my life to being able to do this service today for Brother Reaper. I, I loved him, I loved his family, and he's and he loved you. And I'm gonna get into some of that a little later on. I've got two sermons to preach today and we did about fifteen minutes, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna I'm gonna go through it as fast as I can. I won't get everything. Nobody can ever say all the things we said about Brother Richard and family, what he meant to people. But we're going to enjoy this day. He's better because he's enjoying it. That's right. Amen. And that makes me happy. It makes his family happy. And he's happy. And that's what makes it all worthwhile of being able to be a part of the family of God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, again this morning we come into your holy and divine presence. We come because of what you've done for us on the cross. And thank God for that cross. We know today that there would be no resurrection, and the resurrection has hardly anything want to do with our salvation. But the cross, the word Jesus died upon that cross has all to do with our salvation more than we'll ever be able to know. Because when Jesus said it's finished, he meant it. That was finished. His work on the cross. God, we pray that you will give us the strength, the words, may the Holy Spirit of Almighty God be a witness for us today and an inspiring person within our lives and in the eye of each and all of us here. Be with us, help us, give us strength for the hour, and we'll praise you and love you forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Well, I say praise the Lord. That sounds like Brother Richard, doesn't it? That's all he wanted. He wanted people to he wanted people to go to the promise land with it. Right. Right. Amen. And if you feel like saying amen, shouting a little bit, don't make a difference to me. <laughs> I won't treat you like the one of the last churches I went to. And I got happy, stood up and started shouting a little bit. The pastor called me the next morning and said, We don't do that around here. I said, Well, I won't be back. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I'm, going, I, I'm going to a place where they, you better learn to shout. Amen. But anyway, back a few weeks ago, I uh, led a devotional. I have four or five books that I read beside my Bible about every day. But it, uh, over centuries, many portraits have been handed to Jesus. Perhaps you've seen them in a church or museum or art or even have one in your home. Not one of these are the two portraits. Because we have no photograph or mirror image of our Lord in physical appearance. We do, however, have a magnificent word portrait of him in Isaiah 53. This God inspired the scripture captures in vivid detail what he is all about. Surely he took upon our pain and bore our suffering. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities, and by his wounds we are healed. This passage enables us to see love and sorrow, anguish and pain on Jesus' face. But his lips, but his lips do not accuse or condemn. He has no sins of his own to grieve, only ours to bear. And deep inside he knows that he shall see the labor of his soul to be satisfied. What a portrait of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Now I want to read that and share it with you this morning because of the fact Brother Reaper was a portrait of the Jesus to me. That was the two portraits. You can't find one, as, we, as the writer here said, you can't find anywhere that gives a true image of it. But I think most of us can be able to look at Brother Reaper's life and say, if I've ever seen an image of Jesus Christ, that's him. That's him. And I praise God for that this morning. And that's what God wants to make of all of us. And you may have known of other people that lived in such a way that they to you were the image of Christ. And that's what he wants for every one of us that names the name of Jesus today. To be true to the calling. When we talk about predestination and people get it all mixed up sometimes and I'm going to tell you about it this morning a little bit, not much. Just that he predestined us unto holiness. To be like him. He did not predestined you to heaven or to hell, but he predestined us to hell, to holiness. That's what it's all about. That's what predestination in the Bible means. But I want to read just one verse of scripture from the psalm today. Have you ever, have anybody ever told you that the, the one book in the Bible, the longest book in the Bible is the Psalms? Psalms move you. They, 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 they bring, if, if a song doesn't bring the presence of God down into your heart and life, don't pay no attention to it. Don't even play it again. Don't ever listen to it again. And there's a lot of music in this old world today that people worship. We better learn to worship the right kind of music because when we go into a place where there won't be no Nothing but angels singing and saints are singing. I don't know where they're being and singing there at all. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, I want to read the first verse of the 23rd Psalm. Now, I don't know if you know much about the Psalm. I don't know a lot. I, I'm learning every day that I don't know much about the Bible. But I've been trying to pastor a church for the last three years. I was not far pointed back this last July. But I don't know how many messages that God has given me across my years of pastoring. But I don't think hardly whatsoever in those three years that I've been preaching that God, that the God has given me a new message. New sight. God is literally in these last few years is just pouring.
pouring out truth. You know, you've heard it said that in the last times, uh, we're learning more. It is that way with God's Word. And I said, I'm just going to read one verse of Scripture this morning, and I'm going to try to and, and say a little bit. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Fear. I don't know whether you've ever heard people say that to you or not. Yeah. I mean it. I said it. Fear. You ever heard that you said? Probably four more times have said that. Well, that's what the psalmist David said. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want fear. I think it's a statement. An eternal statement that the psalmist David gave us. That God. Let me elaborate on it a little bit this morning. Who is a shepherd? Who is a shepherd? And we know the psalmist David knew that it was God. It was the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, whichever one you want to believe. But it is a person who cares for and protects. You can, you can wrap all the whole Bible up in this one verse. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Glory be to God. Hallelujah this morning to the Lamb of God and for that great shepherd of the sheep. A person is a person who cares for. You remember some of the stories of the psalm, the psalmist David, how he had quite a resume, didn't he? Of protecting sheep. He was a good portrait of a shepherd himself, of keeping sheep. But he found out also that God was also the shepherd of all shepherds. Cared for. I, and this is just no way in the world that we could be able, but in James 5 and 6, it says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all of your care upon him. All of it. 